what does the message of unity have to do with the body of Christ, with me, with what it means to be found in Christ? This is something that took me a long time to figure out. But what I've always known is that there is a lot of power in unity. The Bible is very clear about that. One passage says, how can one put a thousand to flight and two ten thousand? The Bible talks about how beautiful it is for men to dwell in unity. When the children of men began to build the Tower of Babel, God said, let us go down and confuse their languages. Because they were of one heart and one intent, and if they were to have succeeded, nothing would be impossible to them. It's profound what you find when you engage the power of unity. So how in the body of Christ is it possible to harness unity when there's so many reasons to break fellowship and to dissolve connection? How, how does anybody ever agree to anything? Because for every issue of division, there is a theological argument on two sides of the issue that both may use an equal number of scriptures to make their points. And so <clears throat> how do we know, for instance? And, 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 and let's just get like practical about it, simple, simple you know, comparison. Let's say you have two believers. I, and I've been in churches that, are, that look like both of these examples. In one group, if you do not speak in tongues, you are not saved because speaking in tongues to them is the evidence that the Spirit of God dwells in you and you have received the power to be the sons of God by the Spirit of God that is in you. So if you don't speak in tongues, you're not saved. And I've been in other groups where, you know, salvation is by grace through faith in Jesus Christ and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God and not of works, lest any man should boast. Salvation is a free gift in Christ Jesus. And by the way, when that which is perfect has come, that which is childish should be put away. And that comes at the tail end of a conversation on the gifts of the Spirit. Therefore, they believe that if you are saved, you have the word of God, but the gifts of God have passed away with the first church. Now, this group believes that these people are not saved at all because they do not speak in tongues. But this group believes that these people are occultists and playing with demons because they speak in tongues and they prophesy and they're only right 75% of the time. <laughs> I've been around prophetic circles. I know the truth. <clears throat> and so, who's right? Furthermore, how can there be unity? Let's all get together and just pray. Oh, yeah, that's going to work great. Until that guy starts praying in tongues and that guy gets offended because you're not supposed to pray in tongues. That must be a demonic manifestation. But this guy believes that he can't even engage in the Spirit unless he has prayed in tongues first because that's the evidence of his salvation. And what do you have? <laughs> Fights? <laughs> this is just one battleground in Christianity. And I've been around both groups. I've been around both groups. And I have seen the evidence of Christ in both groups. I have seen genuine believers that love Jesus and are saved in both groups. So, I've thought long and hard about this. 